Здесь я представляю не только высшую школу экономики, и скорее не высшую школу экономики, а частный фонд российский под названием «Хамовники». Этот фонд поддерживает только полевые исследования. Значит, мы уже 10 лет работаем в России, финансируем сейчас где-то до 50 проектов. Может быть, вы знакомы с результатом. Это вот то, что мы начали говорить о самозанятых, о гаражниках, о значит, распределенных мануфактурах, о сословной структуре и многом другом. Значит, я приглашаю вас к сотрудничеству. То есть мы финансируем людей и организаций, которые имеют идеи. И эти идеи касаются, так сказать, повседневной организации жизни, форм выживания на постсоветском пространстве. И не включают в себя как методики анкетные обследования. Анкетные обследования у нас запрещены. Только интервью и наблюдения. Мы исходим из того, что были времена в Российской империи в первые годы советской власти, когда всякая такая социология была никому не нужна. The early years of the Soviet Union, where sociology wasn't really needed, we had great researchers, many of whom were uh, officers of the general staff, Kozlov, Semyonov, Tsimshansky, and many people and their reports which are now being published served as the foundation for adopting political decisions there was no sociologies no difficult notions taken from the west they had decent explanations of how ordinary life and not just ordinary life is organized in the provinces of russia where people worked on the foreign empires where they had interests and this tradition was liquidated at the end of the 1920s early 1930s the first liquidated group in repression were the narrators and the who were trying to uh, restore this this tradition the language of, of narration of clear translatable narration has to be conceived we don't have the words for narrating what in our country in russia is happening now i tune i cannot disseminate the russian experience outside of the russian federation in practically any audience in russia i ask three questions in what part of the transition are we i never get a clear answer there's always a discrepancy in what social time are we living what are we? Feudalism, slavery, capitalism, socialism, where are we? Never get that uh, a consonant answer. A third question that drives everyone into a very bad state is what social group are your parents from? Workers, farmers, servants disappeared in 91. No answers whatsoever to this question. Rough, these are roughly the questions that are asked in the first meeting with a psychiatrist. In the I worked for a while in the Tomsk Republican Psychiatric Hospital. Lost in space, time, orientation. Not knowing who you are is the symptom of quite profound psychiatric disorder. In a civil sense, it's anomia. We don't know the country we live in, it's geography. We don't know the social structure and our place in it, and we don't know what time we're living in. That knowledge is replaced by imported notions, mostly English language notions of democracy, socialism, capitalism, which do not exist in Russia and probably will not exist for a long time to come. And I'm not speaking in any way of Armenia now. These illusions that people gain when they study translated books are very difficult to work with. They're very hard to neutralize, to counter, to mitigate these, these concepts. And part of the lessons in the High School of Economy in the Social Studies Department 
for public administration is replaced with field research. I take my students, all my students of the second year, that's 120 odd people this year, to small regions of the Russian Federation, further away from Moscow, and I just force them to sink into the reality of the Russian province, in daily reality, demonstrating to them that they're all these stereotypes that are imposed on the country by the people that studied using English language translated books do not exist. We don't have a con conflict between the government and the people. We don't have corruption. We have really different phenomena. We don't have alcoholism in the sense that it's described. In our last trip to Kargopol region, Arkhangelsk Oblast, in 12 days there, we did not see a single drunk. There you go. So people drink, but they drink at home. They maintain social stability. Alcoholism doesn't exist. Therefore, well, these stereotypes uh, fade away easily. Students fall fall sick. They they get this cognitive dissonance. Switch on. They start to understand how ordinary life is is built. Sit in a rural shop in the street for half a day, and then in the evening, mandatory seminar. You tell us what you saw, not the terms of your lab report, but the terms of your own understanding. The, this is the understanding we try to instill in them. We try to teach them to avoid the narrative theory that is usually an imported one, straight from observation and description to the explanation theory, which we ourselves have to conceive. So one of these explaining theories, handmade, homemade, is my theory that I will present today. Well, there are difficulties. People complaining that everything is unfair. You try to ask them, what do they mean by fairness? Some very interesting things come up, curious things. To them, fairness is distributional. Our total conceive these two types, the equalizing and distributive. Equality before the law and the inequality in the markets, which forms the class structure and the equalizing one, the socialist one, equality in the resource distribution, inequality because of people uh, by default uh, being deprived of resources, distributional and equalizing, two levels, reality and actuality. 50 years ago, someone said, in reality, it's not what things really are. Reality is what's in the law, and uh, in real life, it's according to the conceptions, notions, notions which are not described in the legal field. The reality that dominates is not described in the legal field. Last year, in one of the trips, a governor of a region said, we live by concepts, by notions. Part of the students were law students. They found it quite odd. Then the local judge confirmed he tries cases not by law, but by fairness. So that's the life. It's the life based on conception and court trial based on fairness. It defines life in the Russian provinces and beyond. As a result, we can have four types of fairness that are objectified, either in ideal capitalism, equality before the written law, or in ideal socialism, or in the corporate structure, in a corporate state, according to Mussolini, or in a communist state. Everyone gets equal. When everyone gets equal, but someone gets more, this is the main motive for 
explaining reality. When I want to stud pay students, not equal amounts, but based on what they have done, uh, some students will engage in protest. They want equal amounts. They want to share equally. Syndicate, syndicative anarchist worldview dominates in not only the student community. Then I have to jump around. Theory of capitalism, theory of socialism, theory of corporativism, professionally organized society, and theories of communism, structureless society. Going to these theories, we get the social stratification, multiple social groups, the intersection of the rows and columns, where a capitalist or analyzes socialist social reality. There's a match. Groups created by the state having certain status, such as guarantees of consumption, workers and farmers in the Soviet Union, post-Soviet, African Americans in the US, are reading the, the lines. And the one type of social groups, which are possible. The second type, market trade unions or the capitalists or those who have capitalist worldviews uh, solidarist type of organization we'll not go into details this is the matrix approach to analyzing the class social structure in the u.s the monographies recounted as as we see them how social structure is, is organized in the U.S., what social groups make it up, the class structure. And now look at ours. I speak this about Russia, I don't know about the other countries. According to Russia, people elsewhere in the world are happy people living and doing great things, like inventing the different class theories, which then get translated into Russian. There's marginal layer one. from a They move resources from a resource state abroad they make the transfer of funds, convert. They also existed in Soviet times, athletes, military personnel, artists that traveled abroad. They converted their social status into different equivalents in money that they were paid for being abroad. Then there's the resource state, per se, such as Russia. I claim and I can prove that there is no capitalism in Russia. No market in Russia, in a wider sense of the word. There is the resource relationship, and I described it back 15 years ago in a book called Resource State and the Administrative Markets of the USSR. There's the second layer, people in uniforms that control transfers of resources, and there's the core the industrial core. There's the oil industry. Around the industry, there are state industry organizations like Grossneft. There are private organizations, non-governmental. Two years ago, in Surgut, one of them burned down. The pipe gas pipeline exploded. 1,220 millimeters. They started looking for the owner. Couldn't find the owner of the gas pipeline. No owner to be found. Or we have these brick factories in Chechnya and elsewhere in the Caucasus, gas powered. But there's no gas pipeline. Where do they get the gas? Magic. There's there's a gas industry then. People produce, people industrialize. A large part of the country, almost all of the able-bodied population are producing. Bureaucrats producing in their places, people who are trained under Western terminology, call, 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 call them corrupt. They're not corrupt. This is their industry. This is their profession. And there are others. In near Moscow, there's this little town where you just have a shoe factory that made shoes for pilots. Surely the, the, they went bust. But the new owners, the invisible owners, did something very smart. They distributed the machines to the former staff in their homes. So now in this town, 
has quite uh, developed manufacturing of Italian shoes. And it's truly Italian because the shoemakers are all trained in Italy, the leather is decent, people sense the components of the shoes around the different houses, and they assemble in Moscow, sell it as Italian shoes. And there are quite a few such industries, and they turn out to be everywhere, these industries. If you count it using capitalist criteria in all of Russia, you, you, you would see an almost doubling of the industry. If you also include prostitutes, because uh, usually it's not counted in statistics. There's this layered understanding of the structure of the country, which helps choose slightly better terms for describing it. People in the resource sector know how to survive. Sometimes they use highly technological uh, skills. Border guards, systemic feudals defending the state from threats in a resource state. You have the bureaucrats who think Russia is surrounded by enemies, not potential enemies, who are a threat to the state. It's borderline system liberals who apply the market and democracy uh, theory to domestic reality. They're all interconnected to one another. System feudals, the residents of the second border layer. What is the external world to a general who's fighting corruption? This local storage of exported resources converted to capital. What is the first layer? The so-called systemic liberals for the systemic feudals, blackmail, and milking. If you watch the uh, Russian television, you would see this. Another liberal turns out from the point of view of the generals being a thief. The state, status feed and benefits, uniforms as subsistence with social packages, as they're called. For the systemic liberal, the external world is, is market and democracy. The state is an institute that curbs market and democracy. Uh, second layer, corruptioners and criminals, thieves in uniforms, and the industrial uh, layer for them is the shadow economy. Diverse opinions and perceptions on the structure of Russia. People get confused in this. The dominant one is the viewpoint of the systemic liberals now in the high school of economy but it's limited because there are other perspectives as well. What makes Russia different from the other systems? In the resource states, the estate-based structured estates are groups created by the state, as let me repeat that. In a market state, class social structure, groups emerging because people are lucky or not lucky in the market. If they're lucky, higher level of consumption. If not, lower level, lower classes. The estates serving and the served. The served estates, mostly created after 2002, under President Putin. Uh, state servants, public servants, three categories, federal, regional, and diplomats. Military servants in eight categories law enforcement in nine categories, members of parliament, four categories, Cossacks, 16 Cossack are troops, judges, prosecutors, diverse estates, which are not understood as an estate. For the estate structure to be uh, fine and decent, it's necessary to have the estate um, self-awareness people to uh, think of themselves as belonging to an estate. That doesn't exist yet with the exception of a few groups of uh, army personnel, including the FSB, where they have the estate self-awareness. Uniform. As in um, Russian Empire, people dressed as farmers, as royals, or as military. I found about 280 normative documents in the Russian government uh, that require uniform. These documents ever worked. You would have people in uniform all over the streets, but they, they don't exist. There is no estate self-awareness, no estate uh, uniform. 
there is the uniform, but people do not wear it. They alienate themselves from the estate. Uh, estate courts in an empire, uh, farmers judged by other laws than the royals. Now we have a different situation. We have one code, but in every article, there's the weaker and tougher measure. Representatives of the lower estates get the highest sentence. Those in the higher estates get the lower sentences. So estate law uh, works a certain way, like everything else known in, in the country. The foundation of what we call our economy. In a market economy, how much money is worth the bank interest? Everyone knows about bank interest, the legal system, based on the protection of ownership rights. And the principle is risk assessment, risk premium, market risks. In our system, the Russian system, the kickback is what defines the cost of resources at the time of distribution. It's the analogy of bank interest. Resources have been nationalized, and they're distributed by the state. It would be funny to think that they would be distributed free of charge. If you get resources, you need to kick back to those who distribute the resources. The kickback standard is the uh, dynamic foundation of, of organizing life in Russia. The kickback standard is regulated by repression. The tougher the repression, the lower the, the kickback. Stalin times, tougher repression, lower kickback, under 10%. And now its kickbacks reach as high as 70%, especially for all sorts of research papers, writing social economic development plans, you see. To write a contract, 70% is kicked back to the organization that gave you the contract the job, the gig. And the system of law, law as, as an understanding of how resources get used. We don't have laws, we have notions, concepts. At the time of settling, they're not inscribed, they don't exist in the text. Unlike the, the laws of the thieves, which exist in details and can be deconstructed as text, notions, concepts cannot exist in text. They exist only in, in life. The principles of functioning of the system, constructing threats and neutralizing them. So we had this easy life 10 years ago. They didn't have a foreign enemy. In Russia, they didn't have a foreign, en foreign enemy. Therefore, we did not need resources allocated to neutralize the external enemy, as there wasn't an external enemy. Now we have this external enemy. Now we have a ministry and an estate to neutralize the threats. And to get great financing from our federal budget. The main principle in life is invent a threat, come up with a threat, convince the government that there is a threat, and get money to counter, to neutralize the threat. All the bureaucrats from the very bottom up write up papers which say, here, we have this huge problem of unemployment that can increase social tension. I have been traveling the country for many years. I haven't seen a single unemployed person. Everyone is working. Everyone is producing. Unemployment is a profession. People are documented as being unemployed, and they get some guarantees for pension or for retirement. Ordinary situation, criminal story. In, you know, 15 million were stolen by unemployed people from a car. Those are the unemployed people. The, these are the threats. The threat exists. And the state provides money uh, for neutralizing threats. And most of the threats are invented, made up. I worked in the system. I know the flow of threats formulated in papers from the bottom. This is it. This is the end. So people at the top in the government get the impression that everything is terrible in the country. 
You need to save the country. You need to reform the country. How do you reform the country? Well, let's go to Sweden or England and see how something is arranged there. And then we come back and we'll do everything exactly the same way in our country, like in Sweden and England. And for 30 years, that's what we're doing. Types of employment in our country now. Hired work, business, industry, service. Not all the types, but these are the f important forms of occupation. How are they different? Hired work, everyone knows. Business. Market income. Material results of activities, commodities, money, status, capital, organizational form, companies, corporations, are regulated by arbitration courts, controlled by the bureaucracy, markets, uh, and purchase and sale. And business being different from industry. Uh, the type of income, honorarium, personalized services, good or good doctor, good hairdresser. So people first work on their reputation, they earn their reputation, then this reputation is converted into money. So reputation is the analogy of capital and business. Organizational forums workshops, cooperatives, forms of regulation, notions, concepts, control, accounting of resources, products, no accounting in the industries in principle. We looked into the banks, it turned out we don't have banks, we have the financial industry. Because they have three types of accounting in any bank. One for the international reports, the other for the central bank, and another for themselves. And they follow the one that is for themselves. And it's destroyed when any inspectors show up. They have special rooms for destroying it instantaneously. These disks are mm, deleted. So real controls disappear. It's the financial industry. You can't sell the industry. It can be taken over or uh, overtaken. I'm out of time. Thank you.